Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we are going to be turning this rusted old plane into this not so rusted old plane. This is an Ohio Tools five and a half, um, a really, really beautiful plane. Um, another name that uh, is, is just as good as Stanley, if not better in some cases, Ohio Tools is a, is a very good one if you can find them. And this is one I got at the uh, Midwest Tool Collectors Meet, and I picked it up for, I think it was $20, $25, something like that, because it was so rusted and it really needed a lot of work. So today I wanna actually go through restoring this, redoing the Japaning, and bringing this up to shiny and almost new looking, but still keeping some of that patina that uh, shows a little bit of age to it. So let's dive in and take a look at how to do this. I picked up this Ohio Tools 5.5 at an MWTCA meet this summer. It was pretty well rusted. Uh, not bad, but a couple of the parts were seized up, broken handle, uh, somewhere around 40 to 50% of the Japaning was missing, and it was just loaded with grime and gunk that most would just need to be scraped off. Uh, it took a good bit of work, but the first thing we need to do is take this all apart, take every piece out, and we're going to scrape out all the gunk and grime uh, because we can't get to the rust underneath and all of that until we get rid of the grime. And yeah, so it took a good bit of cleaning here. Here you can see the, the broken handle. Thankfully, it was a very nice clean break, so we were able to come out of that. I have a, a paintbrush that I clipped off all of the, uh, the bristles on, so it's a much more stiff brush. It allowed me to get in and clean most of that out. And then I put it in a WD-40. Uh, uh, this is a WD-40 specialist rust remover bath. Um, it's one that I've used a couple times, and I, I kind of like it. It's um, a lot like some of the other rust removers. It goes pretty quickly. Um, and I thought I was just going to do a rust remover and keep the original Japaning, but I need to do more. For the handle, I'm just going to glue it back on very, very carefully, hold it in place, and uh, let it sit and let the, the glue cure. And then we can scrape off all of the old lacquer. Um, in some places it had been worn through, some places it was chipped. And so rather than trying to repair or clean up the old stuff, it was just easier to scrape it off. The card scraper or the edge of a chisel or something of that nature, you can uh, get rid of it very quickly. Um, most of the time, I'm just going to do like a boiled linseed oil finished. I like that for my personal ones, um, but for the look and finish for most restorations, I'm going to use a shellac. It just gives a really nice clean coat. Just have to be careful not to put it on too thick. Um, I normally would cut it down to about a two pound cut, but this time I'm doing it just straight out of the can. Um, and it was uh, two coats sanded with 400 grit sandpaper and then a fourth coat. Now, I uh, realized I'm going to have to remove most of what is left of the Japaning, and uh, for me, that means take it over to the sandblaster. And I'm using a soda um, uh, uh, aggregate that will, uh, it, it's very, very soft. It takes longer to get through it. It does almost nothing at all to the metal, and it takes longer to take the paint off, the old uh, Japaning off, but it does actually get through that. I want to do a, a video soon on sandblasting. But uh, yes. Now I'm going to be re redoing Japaning. This is a batch that I've made up myself with um, Asphaltum. Um, I will leave a link down below to Hand Tool Rescue. He has a, an amazing video going into great detail on Japaning. And I'm basically just following his recipe. Um, I have two coats, and each one requires four hours of baking at different temperatures. Um, and so it, it takes a good while to do it, but you get a really, really hard, heavy duty surface that, that looks fantastic and it's very obviously japanning. Um, the, the frog was not flat. It needed a good bit of work and so I'm going to end up spending a good bit of time flattening that. Um, any japanning that leak, leaked over the edge, I can get that off here. So I'm going to be spending a good bit of time with the file, flattening off any surfaces and cleaning up any of the edges where japanning came around. And yes, um, being able to use a file accurately and cleanly and making these pieces fit together is a, is a good skill to learn. Oiling any surface of metal that is open, as soon as we get it, we don't want it to rust. Where the frog sits underneath, I needed to file those down and make sure that the frog would sit. I didn't want the frog to wobble at all. I can put it in there and shake it back and forth and see if it wobbled, and that meant I needed to go back and fix it. Once I had a nice solid fit there, then we can go about working on the rest of the body, making sure to oil where all of the uh, screws thread in the holes, uh, because we don't want those to be rusting. Now for the iron and chip breaker, I, I had those in the rust removal bath, um, but there was uh, some, uh, uh, um, well, it was almost a patina, but it's a little bit darker that lasts over time. So I'm just using a 400 grit sandpaper, very, very lightly removing the surface on it. I'm leaving as much of the uh, metallic uh, dulling over time 
on there as I can, but getting rid of the grime that's on the, the surface that just needs to be taken off. Um, and so it's not a very heavy sand, but just enough to, to bring it back to this uh, worn patina look. Same thing with the lever cap. I'm not grinding that all the way back. I'm just uh, doing enough to make it look decent. Oiling everything that's needed. Here you can see I'm actually just leaving the Japaning on the back of the lever cap here. I'm not going into detail on that. Now on most planes, the Japaning does not come up onto the top edge or the back or the front. Those are left raw. And so I'm just filing off the Japaning that leaked over onto the edge and then truing up the edges. If there were any dings or any uh, scratches, that's where I can then remove them. Now this is how I flatten the sole. And uh, in this case, I'm just gonna be working on the side walls of the plane. Um, I wanna see how close they are. I'm not worried about the sidewall being 90 degrees to the base, the sole. There's no reason for the sidewall to be 90 degrees to the sole. Um, I'm just cleaning them up and I wanted to, to check them for flatness and see if anything was sticking out. After doing that, then I hit it with a 400 grit sandpaper and then bring it to that same finish that I have on the iron and lever cap. Now I want to actually do the flattening on this, or I'm going to do the initial flattening on this, and I'll put a sharpie mark on the toe, the heel, and the mouth. On this glass, I can run across and see, am I needing more work one place than another? This one actually go, went pretty well, and I was able to flatten it in about uh, five to 10 minutes worth of flattening work. But before we actually get to the flattening, we need to put it all together because you can't do the actual flattening until you put the plane into tension and lock everything down. So putting everything into place, I still haven't sharpened the iron yet, we'll do that after the flattening, but I want it in place and locked down so that the frog has a little bit of twist in it. So all the pieces can go into place, put the handle and knob on and screw them down. And this is when things start to get exciting because you start to see the plane come together and you see all this work you've put into it and realize, oh, okay, this is looking really, really nicely. The, the main bolt going through the handle um, ran into the glue, so it had to work past it a little ways, but once it got down there, tightened up really, really nicely. Um, one of the nice things about Ohio, they use uh, st uh, steel as opposed to brass, so they don't strip out quite as much. Brass might look a little bit better, but steel is more functional, and, uh, and in my mind, a better choice. Lock it down, make sure that the iron is backed off, and then we can actually flatten the sole. And you want to do it this way because now you're putting your pressure on the plane exactly how it will be. And I'm going to start with a 60 grit sandpaper and then go to a 100 grit and then a 200 grit and then a 400 grit. And uh, each time I'm going to put a Sharpie mark on the heel, the toe, and the mouth and uh, keep going until those Sharpie marks disappear and I will know that it is flat enough. Um, I, I don't worry about flatness too much and I might talk about flattening in another video. Um, but these are actually uh, belts uh, from, uh, from sanding belts, large, large sanding belts that I've cut down, put them on the glass, and they work really, really fast. Even a horribly out of flat plane, I can usually flatten it in 20 to 30 minutes worth of work. It is not that hard of a task when you, when you set it up right. Um, especially when you start at like 60 grit, you can really grind, grind through those. So now on to the flattening. Uh, it was time to dress my strop again because it was getting a little bit loaded so I can scrape that off and add new, uh, new compound on here. If you want to see this, I actually sell it at my website, woodbyright.com backslash shop. I'll try and leave a link to that down below. But I sell strops and compounds on there as well. So we can put it together and take this thing for a test drive and see does this old girl sing or not. Lock it all down and uh, start to admire the work. Before we go any farther, yes, make sure you oil everything. Um, I oil the wings, and then I'm gonna come back through with a paste wax and wax them all down. Uh, the paste wax kind of fills in any of the imperfections that oil then soaks into the wood. And now we can play with it in the board. Uh, I didn't pick the flattest board to begin with, but in the end, it, it does make it flat because this is a plane, and that's what planes do. <laughs> I just love the sound of a well-tuned plane, and I am really, really happy with how this one came out with the, the new Japaning on this. It just it looks sharp. It doesn't look like something that has been buffed to an inst, and it, I'm, I'm, I'm really, really happy with the transformation from rust bucket to functional plane from something that just looks like it was sitting in someone's basement for years to something that you can pick up and use. So yes, I am very, very happy with this and looking forward to using it in the future. So there you have it. I love how this came out. I didn't want to make this really nice and shiny. I know a lot of people are gonna be out there gonna be saying I took it too far. Some people are gonna say I didn't take it far enough. 
Um, everyone has a different amount on that. This really isn't a huge collector's piece, so I'm not really wanting to make the collector quality to it. Um, but I wanted to make it look nice and show off the Japanning. Uh, if you want to see more information on the Japanning, I'd say definitely go take a look at the Hand Tool Rescue. I'll leave a link to a video he has. He goes into incredible detail in different types of Japanning, um, and I'm actually using his recipe with this Fultum, so it, all of the information for that is on there. I'll leave a link to that down below. Um, so this is about where I really like to take a plane to. I like it to, to still have that little bit of patina on it. It's not shiny. Um, it has a little bit of age. You can still see some of the speckling in it. Uh, I, I like being able to see that it is an old plane, but it has been loved and treated well. And so this is one that I, I don't know if I'm going to use this one or I'm going to give it away someday, but let me know your thoughts, what you think I should do with this one, because I have... Well, several other five and a halfs already. But uh, I hope you like this. If you do have any other questions about it, let me know down below. Also, I have several other videos on restoring uh, where I go through much higher quality restoring and much lower quality restoring. Um, do you just need to shine it up and sharpen it to be using or do you need to do a full tear down on it? If you want to see those videos, I'll leave a link to those down below. So if you did like the video, please hit like, comment, share, subscribe, ring the bell, click the all notifications on the bell, and all of those things really do help out the channel. <laughs> so I say it every time, but really that does mean a lot, and thank you for that. So that's about it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day. Now that, that is not a plain, plain.